It was here in Greece where 12 years ago one of the European Union's biggest crises broke and shook it to the core. Greece back then said it might default on its debt, threatening the viability of the Eurozone itself. To avoid default, the European Union and International Monetary Fund provided hundreds of billions of euros in emergency funding, but this didn't come for free. Creditors demanded Athens implement austerity policies, which finally led to a substantial rise of poverty. The economy contracted by more than a quarter, the citizens' disposal income by one-third, and unemployment rate spiked to almost 30 percent. Now some leaders admit they were too tough on Greece, which finally delivered. In 2018, Greece drew the first line under this gloomy period after ending its third and last bailout program. And four years later, the EU Commission seized as scheduled the monitoring of the Greek budget, marking a formal end to the debt crisis. But what was left behind and what are the lessons learned for the EU, which is now facing another crisis that may test once again its unity and stability? To discuss all these, we spoke to two key players of the Greek crisis management, the former president of the EU Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, and the last Greek finance minister of the bailout era, Euclid Sakalotos, and later to the current chief of Greek economy, Christos Taikouras. So Greece uh, finally, officially exited its surveillance uh, enhanced program after 12 years of pain and a crushing debt crisis. So actually, what does this mean for the Greek citizens and what does this mean for the EU? The Greek citizens themselves, they have many, many reasons to be, to be proud because they have suffered a lot during this awful period. Their dignity was not always respected. Measures imposed on the Greek society were too austerian. And so uh, the fact that Greece now has uh, uh, exited the, uh, not the euro, but the program is good news for Greece. It's good news for you too, because it shows, independently from all the mistakes which have been made, that uh, European solidarity does uh, exist. And those who were defending Greece, I, that was my case, were right to say no to those who wanted to exclude Greece from the, area, uh, from the uh, uh, single currency area. We see that even today there are some populist parties around uh, Europe that are still using the example of Greece and the way the EU behaved to the Greek people in order to blame Brussels for their people's problems. So what would you say, what is real and what is a myth in this situation? Uh, the European Union was not the problem. Greece was the problem. Uh, because uh, Greece, for so many years, did not care about budgets, public debt, and so on. So the fault was with Greece. But the way the European Union was dealing with Greece was not the best way uh, possible. But finally, the success is there. After so many efforts, the success is there. So the uh, populists are running out of arguments if they are uh, referring to Greece, they should, like I'm doing, admire the courage of the Greek uh, people and not try to manipulate uh, the results and the story. Back then there was a perception that actually the decision-making was in the hands of the Germans. So is the EU too much German-dominated? When it comes to Greece, Germany was not the only, only country which has been, has been very critical towards uh, Greece. The Dutch, the Austrians, the Slovaks, the Slovenes, uh, the Finns and others never stopped to attack uh, Greece during uh, uh, the so-called Greek uh, uh, crisis. And uh, Germany was not the only one. And Germany was not and is not dominating the entire European Union. And sometimes the Germans domestically are given the impression that they are the masters of Europe. This is clearly not the case. When Germans are changing their mind for something, 
everybody somehow changes their mind and we are closer to a pan-European solution. This was the case with Greece, this is the case now. Yeah, but that's not only due to the fact that the Germans, in that sense, are becoming more and more European. It's the case for all the countries because the 27 countries had l learned one lesson. And only the fact that European governments are sticking together and are doing more or less the same things is the best way for Europe to deal with crises of that kind. The EU gave a lot of money to Greece, but with painful strings attached. So can you remember moments that the EU actually showed solidarity in a tangible way? Many moments. Uh, when uh, Prime Minister Tsipras decided to have a referendum on the programme, uh, I had to fight hard to uh, prevent other member states from asking officially the exit of Greece from the euro area, because this referendum was a scandal to a large extent, because the people in Greece said no, but the programme, like it was decided, was implemented. The programme was exactly the, the one same. after the was referendum. Was it the same that the one they voted no? Yes. It was a mistake uh, for the Greeks themselves because they were voting on, so on something which did no longer exist. It, it was unnecessary and it created turbulences in the financial markets. Greece came under pressure more than, than before, so uh, I would like to forget that chapter. And when we came into power, there was not much solidarity in the first six months, from January to the summer, when we made the compromise. The, the original Juncker uh, memorandum, which we took to a referendum, was completely unacceptable. It was punitive. It, it had nothing on debt. We managed a better compromise. And I think when the Syriza government showed its seriousness, that it actually wanted to leave the memorandum while doing its best to protect the most vulnerable, I think slowly the Europeans realised, look, this is something that is achievable. I think they, they eventually thought this could be a win uh, for Greece. I think uh, uh, President Juncker is on record as saying that, that he, th he, 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 he staked quite a lot. Uh, he was not like Wolfgang Schäuble, the, Schäuble, the German finance minister at the time, who actually, I think, wanted us out. The fact that we left the programme, something that the, the, the previous governments hadn't managed to do, we had this corridor for debt, we've had the buffer, which gives some protection, um, it was something that the Europeans can be proud of in, in the end, but with a, a huge cost. Let us not forget that. You, because any economy that loses 26% of the GDP, which happened in the first and second memorandum, 26 of GDP. I don't know whether people listening to us quite understand what big, how big a number 26%. There is no other economy that has suffered like that outside a war. So Greece recently exited the EU's so-called uh, enhanced surveillance framework. What does this mean for the Greek citizens? Well, we came out of the agreement in the summer of. Uh, 2018 and it was agreed then that we would leave the enhanced surveillance in, in three, four years. So it's good news uh, and the big question now is whether what we achieved in 2018, which was a clear corridor by regulating the debt so that we didn't have very high financial requirements every year, lower than Spain's and Portugal's, whether we can use that uh, space, that corridor, to be able to reduce the stock of debt, the debt to GDP, by increasing uh, growth. Uh, I'm not very optimistic the way this government has uh, tackled that task, but uh, that's where we are. What, what we achieved in the summer of 2018 was to leave once and for all the memorandum, to have a buffer to give the financial markets some comfort, uh, a corridor for regulating debt which gave us 10, 12 years in which to get our act together on the real economy side.
But you know, even today, uh, the Greek example and the way the EU behaved to Greece and the Greek citizens is still be used by several political forces across the EU, actually to say how bad the EU is and how to blame Brussels for the people's problems. What is reality and what is... And, and rightly so, I think. So Europe has always been... Uh, b behind the curve. They're behind the curve now in the energy crisis. I mean, it's taken a huge disaster to see the first uh, inklings of a united European-wide energy uh, policy. So I think Europe uh, has um, been behind the curve. I think that there is a real threat to the EU already uh, still, which is this divergence in the fate of the economies between Northern Europe and Southern Europe. If you want to understand Salvini and Melone, if you want to understand Golden Dawn, if you want to understand the rise of the new right, then the economic policies that lead to inequality, that, that uh, restrict the public services, uh, the access that people have to health and to transport and to education are part of the answer. But in the end we are coming at the same point. We have the North, we have the South, they have different approaches to the things as we see all, all also today. So what are the lessons learned? L let me be blunt. You cannot have one currency and some countries going forward, another country is not going forward. Eventually, that will uh, break. If you want a common currency, then you have to have convergence. So, and to have convergence, you have to have convergence of policy making. And that Northern Europeans understand that uh, just like the United States, if Texas is in trouble or Mississippi is in trouble or whatever state, there will be solidarity through fiscal policies, through stabilization policies. The same goes through. It, it, it's, it's in the logic of the single currency. So what are the lessons learned and not forgotten from this crisis, especially now that another huge crisis is coming closer? We should not repeat the mistakes uh, uh, we have made uh, during the uh, uh, Greek euro crisis. And I have always considered that uh, the distribution of the efforts between rich and poor uh, was not uh, balanced enough. Part of... Uh, this mistake is due to the European Union because uh, at the IMF, at the Central Bank and at the Commission during the years before my years, we put into place a blind austerity uh, budget, which was a mistake. I th would like the Commission to take uh, under exam the social consequences of the anti-crisis instruments which are uh, put um, uh, into place. This is not a matter for high officials, this is a matter for politicians. Greece's economy grows fast, but the country still has the highest debt-to-GDP ratio amounting to 189%. The unemployment rate is among the highest, while at the same time the minimum wage is ranking among the lowest. The current crisis is turning the spotlight once again onto the south. My colleague Simela Tuchtidou spoke earlier to the current Greek finance minister Christos Taikouras. Greece has uh, recently exited the enhanced surveillance program. What does this practically mean for the Greek people? It's a great success for Greece and the sacrifices, the huge sacrifices of the Greek citizens. This is collectively a success of the Greek government and our partners. This means that uh, we're back to normality for the first time since 2010. This will have positive direct and indirect effects on the Greek economy and society. Uh, we improve our access to international markets. Uh, we, we boost the preconditions for higher and more strong and robust economic growth uh, in order to attract much more investments. And we are much closer to achieve the final goal, the final milestone of our economic policy which is the investment grade status. Practically, Greece has now more economic freedom, but it comes at a time when the perspective for the European and the global economy are quite gloom. so gloomy. So uh, how much room do you actually have to help uh, people, households and businesses in Greece? We try to create the fiscal room and the fiscal space 
uh, in order to, to create a safety net above households and enterprises. And we have proved in the last three years that we achieved to implement efficient fiscal measures in order not only to recover strongly back in 2021, but also to reduce unemployment, which is crucial, taking into account that we had the, the, the highest unemployment among all EU member states. At the same time, it seems that we have a robust economic growth. So we will take into account uh, this economic performance in order to create the preconditions to reduce even more taxes and social contributions mm -hmm. and at the same time to be uh, very close to the Greek society in order to implement uh, these fiscal measures that are needed in order to capture part of the sacrifices due to the economic crisis, the energy crisis that we face at the European level recently. And the bill from all these support measures, does it concern you that it might uh, weigh heavily on Greece's public debt, which is already high? First of all, public debt as a percent of GDP decreased by 13 percentage points mm -hmm. back in 2021. The largest decrease since the beginning of the Eurozone. And we expect this decrease to be much higher in 2022. We have cash reserves at around 39 billion euros as a percentage of GDP among the highest at the European level. At the same time, a significant portion of debt is on the official sector with fixed rates. And the most important issue is that the annual gross financing needs stands at around 10% of GDP, half of what is the average, the European average. All this are competitive com uh, advantages of the Greek debt compared with many other European peers. Okay. And looking uh, ahead, there is a discussion in the EU about uh, fiscal rules and economic uh, governance. Um, do you believe that uh, the rules on uh, debt should be rethought? And what would you propose to your counterparts? Definitely, we should incorporate uh, the experience of the severe crisis we face at the European level in the last three years. The basic um, component is that we should have a fiscal discipline, which is a prerequisite for economic growth, mm -hmm. but at the same time, fiscal flexibility, taking into account the economic cycle. At the same time, we should incorporate the experience we faced by taking advantage of the recovery and resilience plan and the independence we have at the European level in order to implement coherent and sustainable policies at the national level. After having survived all these, what do you see today? Do you think that the situation in Greece, not only financially but also socially, politically, is better? I think that there is no comparison possible between uh, the situation now and the situation uh, I was struggling with uh, uh, at the beginning of the century until uh, 2015 when we finally defined uh, the right answer to the Greek uh, uh, problem. But Greece has still major difficulties. Greece is uh, living in a turbulent region of Europe. Uh, Turkey, the influence of the Turkish aviation, the drilling uh, problems, the close neighborhood to the northern part of the African uh, continent, refugees, with, that's still a major problem in Greece. The times are still difficult. I think the biggest problem is that uh, Greece is not playing the role in Europe it should play. Uh, without Greece, the European Union would not be complete. And uh, I would like Greece to echo in a stronger way its particular uh, voice.